Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, you know, this week has reminded me that life is big. Um, I'm talking with Christy a couple days ago, and somewhere across the years, I started transitioning from being someone who saw parents, grandparents, aunts, and uncles pass away to being somebody that sees peers passing away. Um, I'm not sure how that happened. I have a, a friend that I grew up in church with um, that was diagnosed with uh, Lou Gehrig's disease. And uh, her mom basically has said they're, they're just praying that God would take her. Uh, she can't move, she can't talk. Sustenance is, is through IVs. Um, a horrible disease. Um, she's less than a year older than I am. Uh, several months back, my aunt passed away. Um, now, my aunt, I say my aunt because technically she's my mom's sister. Um, she's only two years older than I am, and we grew up as peers. She, we considered her a cousin. Um, and yet, you know, this week, uh, I, I don't know, it was Wednesday, I think I was talking with Christy about this. Um, if that's all we see, it can lead to a very tilted and slanted version of life. And I was reminded of that. Um, okay, so Sally, do you want to share the good news? Yes. I have a, a new grandson, Tyson Creed. He's almost nine, nine pounds. Great. Oh. Great. Did I say grandson? Oh. <laughs> Maybe wishful thinking. <laughs> but anyway, and this is so great. Just picture perfect mom and baby. They came mm -hmm. home the next day. A lot different than the first. Yes. Go around yes. and praise God and I thank everybody for your prayers. Uh, it was it was great. And he was born Thursday, correct? Yes, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, on and that's an incredible thing. Life is an amazing thing. We have a grandbaby in route, waiting to be seen. Uh, this will be the 10th born uh, and the 11th grandchild. And, and uh, I love babies. I love them, especially when they're grandbabies. <laughs> because you can pamper them and spoil them and give them back, <laughs> you know. And, uh, but then, as most of you know, uh, we also suffered loss this week. Aaron Teal went home to be with the Lord at about 7 o'clock last night. And that's, that's really the sum of life, the ups and the downs. You know, I, honestly, I, I don't know how people that do not have the presence of God in their lives, I, I don't know how they do it. I, I, I honestly don't. Um, because there are times in my life when I have been so desperate for a touch and only God could do that so um, our condolences and love to Richard and Gailey um, as soon as we know plans um, several people have already asked uh, me to let them know as soon as I know um, so keep keep Richard's family in prayer. Okay. I don't think anybody on Thursday really gave a lot of thought to how quickly life ends. So, um, keep them in your prayers. Um, we have been working through 
a family affair. I have one section left that I want to deal with on the children's responsibilities. Uh, thus far, we have gone through, we've looked at uh, the marriage relationship, husbands and wives, and what scripture calls them to in those particular roles. Um, by the way, he's not here right now, but uh, Benjamin decided our shofar needed a stand um, because I think he got tired of me fiddling with it. Um, because it rocks behind me. <laughs> you, you guys probably don't even notice, but I notice. So Benjamin fixed that for me, so give him some love. Um, we looked at the husband and the wife's responsibilities in the marriage relationship. Uh, we moved on to uh, parents and children. We looked at the parents' responsibilities. Um, there were three main categories that those fell into. Uh, the first one was teaching and training. The second one was discipline. The third one was provision. And then there was also uh, a, a fourth thing that we are directed to not do. And that's to exasperate our children or frustrate them or, or incur their anger. Um, now, I can speak in generalities. I can't speak in specifics because doggone it, every one of them is different. Okay? When we had Christopher, um, wow. If you know Christopher, picture that at about nine pounds, three ounces. That, that, he was that way all his life. Um, Christopher has an ongoing war with gravity that usually he loses. Um, he's uh, very loud, very uh, exuberant, a lot of joy. And then Donovan was born. And uh, wow, was he different. Um, you know, we would send the kids to go get washed up, get their PJs on, ready for bed. And, and Christopher, I mean, literally, it's like a, a Looney Tunes cartoon. His clothes would explode off of him. I mean, you walk in and there's things just flying everywhere. Donovan, in the meantime, takes off his shoe and puts it down. He takes off his other shoe and sets it beside it and rolls his sock and tucks it into the shoes and, and, and very different. Well, then... Benjamin comes along, and, and while, while uh, Christy was pregnant with him, we're thinking, how is he going to be different? We've got both ends of the spectrum. He's got to be like one or the other. No, because the spectrum doesn't go in a linear fashion. It goes wherever it will. And, and Benjamin is his own unique person. Um, you know, and, and actually, uh, the, a lot of his traits are, uh, he, he's a lot of Christy in a male form. Um, they're, they're just alike. Um, and oftentimes she will have to explain to me, or she would have to explain to me, why he would do what he would do, because I don't get it. Okay? <laughs> and then Bug. And Bug comes along, and she is her own unique person. She is nothing like her brothers. <clears throat> Unfortunately, as Benjamin is an echo of Christy, Mackenzie's an echo of me, and she has a lot of the same character attributes that I have, and I've been praying for her. <laughs> so, you know, you can join with me in that. Um, well, then, you know, you have this entire cloud of different personalities, and then Thaddeus comes along, and he's not like any of them, you know. Um, you know, according to his siblings, he's our favorite. You know, it's not our fault that they left their rooms and he took them. You know, I have no use for it. I've got my room, you know. Mackenzie moved out and after a couple of days, I got up one night, I was having an insulin reaction. I walked down the hall and I, Thaddeus isn't in his bed. I'm thinking, what? What in the world? I go investigating. Well, he's not out in the kitchen. He's not out in the living room. Where did he go? And, and I got to tell you, sometimes when that happens, I start to wonder if I miss the trumpet. Okay? Because, 
you know, things are out of, this happened two or three days ago. Um, Thaddeus gets very exuberant when he talks about things that are of interest to him. Uh, for those of you that don't know, he's been writing a series of books. And uh, I told him, I don't want to know anything about it until it's done. And then I want to read it just like I would read a, a new book. So he and Christy, they'll go to other rooms and talk about it. And it, it doesn't help because the more he talks, the louder he gets. <laughs> so they were talking and they were doing something. And I, I walked back to the back of the house and I grabbed something when I came back out. And it is dead silent. And neither of them are there. <laughs> I literally, I walked the entire house, I went out the side door, looked out in the front, went to the back door, looked out the back. The back I knew they didn't go because the snow was all pristine. So if they went that way, it was up, okay? And I, I really, at that point, I'm starting to go. And then I hear Christy laugh. And evidently, because Christy continues working while Thaddeus is talking, he just follows her around. You know, I, I've got a simple solution for that. I just tell him to go do it. You know, Christy's going to go down and change laundry. Thaddeus, go change the laundry. Then I don't have him following me around. He just goes on his own. Okay, so for those of you that were wondering, the rapture did not happen. Okay? Um, so all of our kids are different. Um, so I can't tell you exactly how it's going to look for you and your children. Conversely, as we get into um, the children's responsibilities, you know, as, as much as our children are different, our parents are different as well. Uh, and especially when, uh, you know, you're, you're married and you have two sets of parents um, and you... you honor both sets of parents and, and you know because we looked at what what our children's responsibilities and, and the first one is obedience okay and we look at this and we see that this specifically is uh, while the child is still under the, the parents authority in the household there comes a time when it's time for them to leave and and go into their own households young men especially um, we have room in our house for one alpha. That's it. And uh, we didn't get any beta children. All of our children are alphas. And when they get to that point where they're wanting to kind of do things their way, it's time for them to do things their way in their own house. Okay? And, and God has designed it such that, you know, a couple years after puberty starts, uh, that there just gets this drive and this this thing in men to do things their own way. Um, and then after about 10 or 12 years when all the hormones settle down and they realize that actually their parents were right, um, you know, then, then they have children their own that are starting to get to that point and, and the cycle continues. So we, we talked about um, obedience. We've talked about honoring. And again, I can't affix a definite to that because what makes me feel honored is not necessarily what makes Christy feel honored. Feel honored. Um, Christy loves cards. She, she just, she loves getting cards. I don't understand that. Um, not that I dislike cards. I'm just pretty apathetic. There's a card. Oh. Thanks. You know, do I give you a quarter or, you know? Um, and so, you know, the, I try to instill in our children, you know, Mother's Day, birthday, whatever, give her a card, okay? Um, so when she receives a card, she feels honored. When I receive a card, I feel confused, okay? Um, Christy, uh, is honored when I take care of the dishes, okay? And with, you know, her working more hours, um, we end up, you know, there, there are more dishes that need to be done by me, and so I eat on paper. <laughs> <laughs> hey, babe, I got the dishes! 
okay? Um, the, that doesn't really speak to me, except when I know she's doing it as an act of love to me. <clears throat> Making the bed. Every week we wash our sheets and, and uh, Christy hates making the bed. So um, I try to pay attention when the sheets are en route to the bedroom and go in and help her get the bed made. Uh, but the last two weeks I didn't even see her take them in and I just walked in and the bed was made. That speaks to me because I know how much she dislikes that. Right? Now, what makes me feel honored as a, as a father is going to be different than what you guys, you men feel honored as a father and what Christy feels honored as a mother is different from what you women feel honored. So I can't pin down, as a matter of fact, last week I tried to um, get some objective answers as to uh, what is honoring and we really couldn't come up with different things. What we came up with is you know when you're not honored. Okay. Because a negative always speaks much more loudly than a positive. That's, that's a, I'm sure that's a part of sin, okay? So, children are called to obey. Uh, as they come into their own household, they are not given room to uh, not honor, okay? Um, you will honor your parents, you should honor your parents all the days of your life. Even should your parents go home, when you speak of them, it should be in an honoring way. Okay, um, so there's, there's uh, just one or two more things that I want to hit um, on children's responsibilities to their parents. Uh, we looked in um, Exodus 20, the giving of the Ten Commandments. Uh, we saw that the first commandment dealing with interpersonal relationships is the command to honor your father and your mother. And, and we see, though, that it doesn't just say honor your father and mother. There's, there's something that follows that. There's a result that comes out of that. And because it goes on to say that it may go well with you in the land. Okay? Um, that is the, the first commandment with the promise. Uh, we see that uh, Jesus reiterated this command to the rich young ruler specifically. Uh, he also uh, reiterated this command when he was chewing out the Pharisees uh, because um, honoring your mother and father is a command and they were all tripped up because the disciples didn't wash their hands. And so Jesus, um, you know, it's an amazing thing how hard a word can be even when it's given in love. Okay? Because sometimes we need the hard truths. Right? So uh, when Jesus spoke to the Pharisees, he wasn't, he was speaking to them because he loved them. He saw their need for him. Okay? One of the most difficult uh, types of people to convert to Christianity is somebody that grew up believing they were a Christian. You know? Uh, they grew up in church, they went to all the camps, they, they know all the hymns, they know all the songs, they knew, they, they've got some verses memorized and they're good to go. Um, we, we see it a lot in church. Um, so one, one area that I want to address really quickly and the responsibilities of the children to their parents um, this is an incredibly important issue in God's eyes. Okay. Um, we know uh, as believers that we are adopted into the family of God. Okay. We are co-heirs with Jesus. Um, he is our Father. Uh, you know, I, I've said it many times. Not everybody is a child of God. John makes it clear that to them that believed, he gave the right to be called the children of God. It's a privilege. Um, only those sealed with the Holy Spirit are the children of God. Okay? And as such, if we 
uh, keeping in mind that everything that we see in this life is an example of something greater. If we do not honor our parents, how can we dishonor our parents and then say we are honoring God? Because if you dishonor your parents, you've already dishonored God because he's told you to honor them. Um, so uh, there's a couple of things that I want to point out to you as far as how serious of an issue this is for God. Uh, Leviticus chapter 20, verse 9. You don't have to turn there. I'm just going to touch on these couple verses real quick. If you'd like to see my notes after or have a copy of them, just let me know. I'll make you a copy. Um, so Leviticus chapter 20, verse 9. says, For anyone who curses his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. He has cursed his father or his mother his blood is on him. Deuteronomy chapter 27. Okay. This is the uh, blessings and the cursings. And um, this is one of the cursings. This is from uh, Mount Ebal. Uh, Cursed be anyone who dishonors his father or his mother. <coughs> And all the people shall say, Amen. Uh, real quick, what does Amen mean? So be it. So be it. it doesn't mean the end. You know, it's, it's, it's not the title card at the end of the movie. You are uh, uh, affirming what has been said. So all the people say, so be it. Okay? Everybody, nobody's exempt. Okay? So, cursed be anyone who dishonors his father or his mother. Proverbs 20, verse 20, if uh, one curses his father or his mother, his lamp will be put out in utter darkness. Now, what's significant about this is do you understand what utter darkness represents? Anybody? Yeah, you're, you, you are not in the presence of God. You, you have been cast out. Okay? Okay. Um, and then again, Jesus reiterates this in Matthew 15. Um, so, I say these things so that you will understand how important this command is to God. Okay? Um, I can't give you the details of how you should honor your parents. Um, I have seen with my own eyes how some of you have honored your parents, and I... I, I have, uh, I'm amazed, honestly. You guys have done an incredible job taking care of your parents. Uh, I look around and I can see several um, couples and, and children who have done incredible things for their parents and serving them and taking care of them. And that speaks well, as a matter of fact, I believe uh, that's one of the things when uh, our works are judged that God will reward. Okay, and I know some of you guys have huge rewards coming in heaven. Um, so, uh, in our culture, by our laws, um, you know, when uh, someone curses their mother or father, uh, they're covered under freedom of speech by our laws, but there is a law that supersedes that, and one day they will um, have to give an account for that. That's not an easy thing to bear up. Okay. Um, thank God that His grace exceeds our sin. <coughs> Excuse. <coughs> Excuse me. One other thing about this. Um, if you have your Bible, go ahead and flip open to 2 Timothy chapter 3. I'm going to start in verse 1, and I'm just going to read this section. Um, you should be pretty familiar with this. Uh, this is a prophetic statement of the last days. So in verse 1, Paul is writing to Timothy. Okay, This is what's, what's considered a pastoral epistle. Um, he, he is kind of showing Timothy those things that he needs to know 
as he moves into his position as a pastor, a shepherd of the flock. So in chapter 3, um, it says, But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. That's got to be significant, because I've been through a lot of difficult things in my life, and they weren't the last days. Um, that indicates to me that uh, it's going to get bad. For people will be lovers of self. Lovers of money. Proud. Arrogant. Abusive disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power. Avoid such people. Now, this is quite a list. Um, this, is, this passage is one of the reasons that I think we are uh, very close to the last days. Uh, we need to remember, though, that we have a, a mindset in our culture um, where we are, our, our thinking is America-centric. Okay. We tend to view these things through the lens of, of the United States of America, and, and we hold them up in light of Scripture. Um, this is not just for America. This is for the world. Okay, um, Because I look at some of these things right now, uh, people will be lovers of self. Lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents. You, you see he stuck that right in the middle there? <laughs> disobedient to their parents. I, I can't stress enough how critical this issue is. Um, you know, when our kids become teenagers, I, I saw a gentleman illustrate it this way at one point. How parents see their children's teenage years is a river that's going along. You know, when, when they're little, it's, it's a fairly calm, peaceful river. But as they draw into these, these puberty years, uh, the, the current speeds up and then they get to be a teenager and there's just this huge waterfall and it's just all downhill from there, okay? And I know a lot of times, you, when, when we have children that age, that's what it feels like. We're in a free fall, okay? But I don't believe that's an accurate picture. I think the better picture is that as puberty comes on and, and uh, young men and women are, are starting to feel that desire breaking in them to be in their own households, uh, it's, it's the, the river is moving faster and, and you're going through rapids, okay? But there comes a time when that all settles out, okay? And it starts to slow down. And, you know, they become adults and they become parents and they become responsible for their own things. And, and all of a sudden, things have restored to normal, okay? Um, so I would encourage you, if you have uh, children that are uh, going through that, you know, always pray. Oh, even, even, God has blessed Christy and I with some, uh, actually all of our kids are incredible. Um, we have been hugely blessed. Um, oh, you know, I don't know of anything uh, that they've done that would make me go, huh? Well, that's not true. I, I found holes in my wall that made me go, huh? Um, no drugs, no alcohol, nothing like that. Um, 
I don't know why that part was so easy for Christy and I. Because um, it, it certainly wasn't because of us. It wasn't like we had some magic skill. Um, I, I think God just blessed us. Um, now, as our kids get older, I might hear some of these stories that if I'd heard at the time, I wouldn't have been too happy about. But knowing that they lived, um, you know, we know there's a good outcome. Okay? So children, responsibilities to their parents, uh, obedience while they're in the household, honor throughout the entirety of your life. You should always honor your parents. doesn't matter whether they're here or not. When you speak of them, it should be honoring, okay? Um, be warned how serious of an issue this is in God's eyes, okay? Um, 